Hey, Dan Meyer here, and today we're going to hit part five of the five-part series on how the effective managers of virtual teams. So the idea behind the video today is really gonna kind of recap and talk about building reliable teams. We're gonna take elements of the first four videos that I've dropped already um, and really kind of focus in on how to bring it all together to build virtual teams. And this is my area of expertise. I have been doing this for close to 30 years. And the way I do it is I manage a virtual team thinking about what everyone involved in the business needs out of meetings, needs out of communication, needs out of a common strategy, and how do we all get what we want out of the, the time together? How does our interactiveness online mimic and even improve upon how we would do it in person. What are effective companies doing to remote this? Well, I could talk about my experiences at Wells Fargo, as well as my time working with multiple clients across multiple types of business, um, helping them virtual team build virtual teams, uh, talking about my experience. And really, the, the what it all boils down to is it has to be reliable. For virtual teams to be sustainable, to run a business on a long period of time, you have to be reliable. Reliability is key. So again, this is something I've been doing for uh, most of my career. And what I've found is that the key, like I said, to this is reliability. And the way you measure reliability is that people always come to the meetings, come to the interaction, do follow up, can work with each other collaboratively because everything that you do as a leader is consistent, is clear and builds certainty. I'll talk about the importance of those things, right? So your team's reliability can make or break a business. And really as a leader of the team, it's up to you to make sure that you're able to work at peak performance. So you want to build consistency in your team's performance. This is, again, number one, right? Uh, you want to make sure people know what their role is, know when they're supposed to contribute, how they're supposed to contribute, and bring it together. You're the um, conductor of the orchestra. You're the foreman of, of the manufacturing floor. You're trying to get everything in sync to be consistent in their pr productivity. You would empower people to be best at what they're best at, to do their thing. And you do that to give them both a sense of uh, letting them get out there and take initiative and take action. But you also want to have accountability. You also want to be able to measure success, be able to determine what's working and what's not, and make adjustments. But consistency really is key number one. So you want to make sure that, again, when you're recognizing people as well, you want to you want to recognize performance both as a team and as individuals. You want to share collaboration. You want to have good project management tools like Asana or Trello. You want to have good communication tools like we use Facebook Messenger. You can use WhatsApp. You can use text. Different ways to communicate. Um, you want to have regular meetings um, or you can both collaborate and communicate as a team using like Zoom. Um, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that you are really pushing consistency in the way that you communicate and collaborate. This again uh, increases the reliability, reliability of your team's performance for your clients, for your customers, and for each other. Um, you want to make sure you measure productivity. Right? I mentioned it before, right? you know, KPIs, key performance indicators. What are the most important things to the success of your business? How much XYZ are you making? How fast is it taking you to make it? Who are you delivering it to? How do you measure if what they get is what they wanted? And how satisfied are they with what you provide? All these things should be measurable. And your team's contribution to these metrics should also be captured in metrics or key performance indicators, right? How many widgets, how time, much time is an individual person to make? And what is what do they get if they're making a lot versus a little? And what's the importance of quality? And what are expectations as far as how much time it should take? All these indicators should be measured. The bigger your business, the more measurements you need to worry about. But regardless, you should have some key indicators that allow you to measure the productivity of your overall business and productivity of individual contributors. You do this and you're gonna be able to identify where you have waste or inefficiency. You're gonna be able to make process improvements. You're gonna be able to evolve the business effectively if you have the right data. You also wanna build consistency by making sure that your team is more confident in their roles. This comes from good communication between you and individuals as well as you and the team. Make sure people feel empowered to contribute. Have a safe, comfortable space for ideas to be shared. Make your staff meetings or your team meetings a place where people can bring in agenda items and share things. Give people the chance to grow. Always assume that where people are at today is not where they want to be in a couple of, couple of years, and they're going to need to evolve to get there. They're going to need your help and your guidance and your permission to do that in some cases. So be cognizant of that and be aware of it. Make sure that you're helping them get to where they want to go, which will help you get to where you want to go. You also want to make sure that when you're building consistency, that you're starting to really focus on the clarity of message. 
right? You want to say, in a sense, the same thing over and over again to the point where everyone can actually know it by heart. You want to have your core values. You want to have your your expectations, what you do to, to demonstrate success on a personal and professional level. All that should be something that people can see, and they see a clarity of leadership coming from you. And that builds to a clarity of purpose for them as employees. And this really helps in the, in the empowering of them to do more. And this is important in the online space because there's ways to really share your story and your what you're doing and why you're doing it and really give them a piece of that so they can actually do the, their own why and how and what their piece of it is will become something important to them. They always talk about how you want to give people ownership of a business. They always talk about how you want people to feel invested. Well, this is how you do it. You build clarity from yourself on what you expect of them and they can then define the clarity within themselves of what they expect of themselves and each other. The other thing is that I talk about certainty a lot, right? You want to build a sense of certainty among your employees. They know what to expect when they come to a staff meeting. They know what to bring. They're ready. They're engaged. They're boom, ready to contribute, ready to share, ready to express their concerns or their ideas or, or brainstorm new ideas, solve problems, whatever it is. They come ready to play because you built a sense of certainty that they can expect to do that. You want that same thing to translate out to your customers, your clients, your audience. You want them to have a certainty that you're always going to deliver what you're going to deliver. Reliability is key to virtual success. You have to be reliable yourself. You have to always be on time. You have to be consistent in your messaging. You have to be clear in your messaging. You have to build certainty. It starts with being on time. It starts with you setting the example, you having the, the, the working the hardest and being the most. You probably are. That's why you're leading your business. But you have to show that and demonstrate that and give people reasons to emulate that and to, you want a role model for them. This is something that's super important. It's hard to do when we have so much to do. The things that we should focus on, what I've been talking about for the last 10 minutes, are things that we can lose track of when we're doing all the busy work, when we get stuck doing administrative stuff. It takes a lot of time to put together a list of attendees for a Zoom call, invite everyone to the Zoom call, when make sure that everyone's on the Zoom call, manage the Zoom call, make sure we're taking notes, making sure that we're acknowledging people that contribute, making sure we're taking note of who's not there, doing follow-up. Let a VA do that. Hire a virtual assistant to manage all that administrative stuff. It takes a lot of time and energy to do follow-up, to send reminders to your team, you know, thanking them for their service and awarding them for their great uh, contribution and giving them you know, recognition and acknowledgement of what they've done to add value, both as a team and individuals. Have a VA manage all that for you. You should focus on what you do best, which is lead, and hire a virtual assistant to do all the rest, all the administrative stuff. This is the key to my success. I've grown six businesses, and each business, the key point when the business went from here to here is because I hired the right assistant that helped take away a lot of the things that had to get done, but I didn't have to be the one to do them. Allowed me to focus on what I did best, which allowed the business to grow at a much quicker rate because I wasn't bogged down doing busy tasks that were repetitive or mundane or routine or just not important for me to do, but important for the business to have done. So. If you want a VA to help you do these things, to help free you up to be a better leader, to give yourself more time to devote to leadership, then hire a VA. We can help look at your data, analyze your metrics, your KPIs. We can help you build training videos and, and do things like take your Zoom calls and turn them into uh, recordings that have interactivity to them, that have cool graphics and design and allow people to use this as a, a, a knowledge bank. Um, we can help you figure out how to share things to a larger audience. We can repackage and repurpose stuff for uh, not just your team, but the entire business or even your clients. We can help you even share it across social media. Um, these are the things that a virtual assistant can do. So they can keep you out of Busyville. They can help you focus on what you do best and they can do all this other stuff. So if you're curious about finding out how to, about how to get a VA, go to sonicva.com, S-O-N-I-C-V-A.com, sonicva.com, um, and we'll help you find a VA that can help you free yourself up to be a better, better virtual leader. You need someone to be your right hand. If you're going to really lead and grow a business virtually, you need someone who is your wingman. So that's my talk for today. I want to thank you for your time. Now go out and manage your team like they are amazing and be the best virtual boss you can be.